Yeah, well, it's a real privilege. I, I don't take it for granted being the national manager, head coach of Team Australia. Uh, it's wonderful being able to deal with a whole different range of athletes. And playing for Team Australia means probably something more than it does for every other country. We have a real mix of players. We have players who are currently in professional baseball chasing their dreams, some in the big leagues, some at the lower levels, some at the high levels. And to them, playing for Australia obviously means a lot. But then we have another group who've, who've been through that journey, been released, and they've made the decision to keep pursuing uh, the dream of playing for Australia. And, uh, you know, they're amateurs, but in every bit, they're professionals, the way they go about it. So we have a real different uh, mix of players, and playing for Australia is special for that. Everyone's in it for the right reasons, and uh, I think my role is just trying to keep everyone on track and not just have us uh, roll through and just um, remind them that it is a special group. We're all tied together. We're all tied to the history. Uh, I remember being 12, 13 years old and hearing stories of Team Australia back then and players back in the 50s and 60s, and we're all connected. And so as a player, sometimes you feel like, you know, that your period is the most special period. And it's good to feel like that. It's good to feel like that as a, as a coach and as a player, but it's just not the truth. You're playing for the young kids. You're playing for the, the, the older generation. Um, and when you put on that jersey, even though you may not see the, the fans and the support, you're representing everyone. And I, I try to remind the guys of that. And um, I've just been super impressed by the way they acknowledge that. Um, and that's the thing I enjoy the most about this group. You know, the competition is strong, playing against the best teams in the world, obviously. Um, so we have a responsibility to prepare and be the best we can. And, we have a responsibility to, to try to keep climbing up the ladder of, of our ranking. We got to six. Um, through COVID, through doing nothing, we dropped down to nine and 10. Uh, hopefully we start that journey back up. We want to get up in, the, up in the single digits, the three, the four, the two, the one. You know, that's the journey we want to be on. So um, everyone involved in the group knows, it's, we, we all know we're not just coming together as a, a bunch of club guys who want to have a bit of fun and throw on the Australian uniform. It means a lot on so many different levels. Yeah, well, I mean, I was very fortunate to, to achieve a lot as a player and very fortunate to do that with a lot of great people. And um, through your playing career, you, you get to reflect on players and coaches and support staff who taught you a lot along the way. Uh, as you transition to becoming a coach and, and manager, head coach, the biggest, the biggest challenge is not to think like a player. You want to try to communicate. So that's the biggest challenge is how do you communicate all the good stuff you have? You know, how do, I, how do we communicate, how does Graham Lloyd communicate his World Series experience? You know, how does he communicate, you know, struggle in a single A? Um, we, we relate with the players at every level. They may not realize it, but we relate. So the biggest obstacle for a coach is trying to find those touch points with the players where we can communicate, where they know that we understand, uh, they know that we got their back. Um, but ultimately it's their time, you know, so as, as a coach, as a player, I don't ever lose sight of that. It's never about the head coach. It's never about the coaching staff. It's always about those playing. They got that special time in their life where they get to go out and represent the country. So um, I just try to communicate and get all the coaching staff to communicate every bit of knowledge and experience we have. Yeah, the future of baseball after COVID, I, I think is a little bit of wait and see. I mean, we all hope for the best, obviously. There's a lot of uh, energy and enthusiasm. There's a lot of great people and leadership that uh, are working really hard to make it, make it good. I think the fans are really gonna be excited by what they see. Uh, what I'm sensing, I know in, in my own spirit and being around coaches and players that are back on the ABL teams, to have baseball back, to have the ABL back, um, it's just been out of sight, out of mind for so long. And having, having the players around, I'm seeing you know, this childlike joy, this, this Christmas tree like fun that they're having with each other. I think the fans will experience that. Um, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, hopefully we can just continue to grow the game. Hopefully we can uh, continue to improve the commercial side of the game. You know, I really hope there are some, some people in Australia that, that get behind us. I think, I think we have a product and we have the people, a group of guys that I, I think people would really like to support if they, they knew our story. You know, I think that's our biggest struggle is getting our story out there. Sometimes it's a little bit disheartening to see maybe some other sports being given the red carpet treatment. Um, and I don't think any sport 
has players that work harder, commit more. I don't think any sport does it unless, uh, respectively, considering what we do around the world on the world stage. Um, and I'd be quite happy to have that conversation with anyone, um, uh, anyone all the way up to Prime Minister if you're listening. But um, yeah, I think that's what makes me proud about it. That's why I enjoy it. That's what keeps me coming back. It's really tough. It, it, can, it can really beat you down sometimes, but uh, overall, you know, there's generations after us that we, we need to work hard for. Yeah, I think the product, I really enjoy the ABL schedule. I think they've got it right. You know, it's a 10 week season, predominantly weekends. Uh, players for the most part are rested, um, travel's good. And I think um, the fans that come out, they get to come out, they get to have that barbecue feel, that Aussie, Aussie summer night at the ballpark feel. Um, there's, a, there's a hint of Americanism in it. There's a little bit of Asia in it, but it's, it's our sport. And I think, I think every, every city does a little bit differently. Um, but I really like the schedule. I like the, I like the fact that we, uh, the players get a few days off to work hard and then we, we play hard on the weekends. I think, uh, especially given our time of year, it opens up for a lot of possibilities with uh, other players and countries, countries coming down here. Um, that's the part I like. I, I like. I like the Australian part of it and, and uh, I hope we keep it. If I had an open checkbook for the next 10, 10 years in Australia, I would inject a lot in the facilities. I think the facilities attract a lot of people from around the world, a lot of organisations from around the world. Um, I'd like to put, put a lot more money into the coverage of the game and a lot more money into uh, youth development. I think they're probably the three, three areas. Um, but if we can get the stadiums right, where the fans come out and they can really experience, this is what it's like to go to a baseball field. This is what it's like to experience it, you know, where the corporates are taken care of in, in, in that baseball way, in that baseball sense. I think uh, the trickle down from there would really help. The player development would really help with better stadiums and better facilities. The engagement for international people would be better. So um, yeah, I hope I have the problem of having that open checkbook.